Let's turn our attention now to another one of our lockdown stories. I've been asking you to get in touch, whatever your experience of lockdown, about telling us what's been happening to you and your family. We've had lots of people talking about dealing with their autistic children, a difficulty of educating their kids while working, businesses closing down, losing their jobs, being on furlough, not getting any help, uh, having your wedding cancelled three times, being literally legally banned from getting married right now. There's a legal ban on getting married unless one of you is dying. Extraordinary. People not being able to visit their loved ones in care homes. I, I want to hear all of your stories. We want to get them on air. People know what the true cost of lockdown is do email me or get in touch really simple email address breakfast at talkradio.co.uk that's breakfast at talkradio.co.uk put in your name and just a few details about your story and your, your mobile number and then we can get back in touch and get you on air so do please get in touch particularly like to hear from more people who are suffering from um, losing their job uh, and uh, and of course businesses closing down as well because there's an awful lot of the economic effect there that we're not hearing enough about uh, right now though delighted uh, that uh, Sophie has got in touch uh, she's 17 year old uh, in, in Newcastle and uh, is obviously still at school or Sophie you would be if you were allowed to be at school good morning to you good morning um you were a year 13 student now what's that in old money is that a final year of sixth form yeah it is I, I, I always have to think of it in old money <laughs> um and you were at a state school in Newcastle um but obviously not allowed to go in you've missed the best part of a most of the last year tell us what lockdown has done to you well, obviously, we don't have any live lessons, really. So every day consists of getting emails sent with the work. And it's just really difficult to sit in your bedroom and try and motivate yourself to do work every single day without fail. And it just seems like a constant repeat. And it's just really morbidly depressing, to be honest, because it feels like we're going nowhere. And it feels like everyone's dropping their grades significantly. And it's just not fair. Um, I, I, I'm intrigued by the fact that you and I hear this from parents a lot. Obviously, no live lessons. Why can't your school give live lessons? I mean, I've had them occasionally, but I'm not sure, to be honest. I wouldn't blame it on the school, I say, because obviously they've got stuff to do as well. But it's just, I think they think it's easier just to send the work. Well, I'm sure it is easier for them. But I mean, there's, if, others, <laughs> if other state schools and more than private schools can manage to do Zoom lessons, uh, actually live lessons. I mean, if they're teaching a class, um, even the kids who have to be in school who because of their, uh, um, you know, the, the, the issues, the parents are key workers and the like, everyone can just sit and do the same Zoom lesson as far as I, 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 the technology's there. It's free for schools to use or that's all teams lesson i'm not quite sure why they can't do that but so basically you get up you put the alarm on in the morning presumably you know there's no point getting into uniform or anything like that and uh, um you, you you get up and then you just sit at your desk and you have you're just basically at your desk all day in your room doing doing work without much feedback presumably do you do you get to chat to your friends do you get to see your friends do you get to actually interact with the teacher at all um, we don't get to interact with the teacher much. I'm lucky that I have a part. Well, I'm full time at the moment, so that's the only kind of human interaction I get with my peers. Uh, but that's it, really. Nothing else. No contact with friends. I mean, you're allowed, obviously, out of your home for exercise, to go to the shops for essential uh, reasons. Um, that does include exercise. It's certainly my daughter spent, you know, certainly half term now, all day out, all day with one friend, which she's legally allowed to do. God forbid she'd met a second friend because then she'd be co committing a criminal act. But are you making sure you are getting outdoors, getting physical exercise and seeing friends when you legally can? I'm trying to, yeah, but problem um, with my school is quite a lot of people live quite far away. And yeah. obviously, if you're travelling on the metro, as we have to, to go see each other, that's not classed as essential travel because you're only meant to stay in your own area. So if we got caught, then we'd probably get in trouble. So it's just kind of the rules are struggling with, really. I bet, I bet they are. Um, you, you, yes, you said you're also you're working, you're working full time as well. Um, so you try and sort of, you know, keep up to actually you know, to actually sort of have some purpose in life. Yeah, definitely. If I, if I wasn't working, I think I would have gone crazy by now because it's the only thing keeping me sane, actually going and doing something with my life rather than just sitting in these four walls forever. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people listening will say, well, I like to think actually most of my listeners are far too sensible to say this, but a lot of people will say, you know what, it's only a few weeks, it's only a few months, Sophie. You know, you're young, you've got your whole life ahead of you. You know, you're saving lives. It's not much to ask. You're not allowed to see your mates and go to school. It's not much to ask of you to sit in your bedroom for week and week on end. What would you say to them? I would say that this isn't the first time it's happened. It's probably the third time that it's happened since we've been in lockdown for as long as I can remember now. And I would say that these are meant to be the most crucial times of our lives and they're just wasted by sitting and doing absolutely nothing.
And, and also there's, there's such a big part of school life that is it's not just what you learn in the lessons. It's the social interaction, isn't it? It's the team sports. It's the drama. It's the, the concerts. It's uh, it's it's just the, the, the messing about at lunchtime and in the playground. I mean, some of my happiest memories from my childhood are, are that sort of mucking about at break time. What, what does it mean for someone who's young and sociable starting out in their life where, where your, your, your friend group, your classmates are so important in your life to to be legally banned from being with them. It just feels really strange. Like we, me and my friends keep saying it constantly how it just feels weird that it's literally illegal for us to meet in groups bigger than two. Like, how is that correct? Like, surely we should be allowed. Humans are meant to be social creatures. They're not meant to be isolated by themselves. So it's just it just feels so strange and so like dystopian, really. Yeah. Um, what would you say? And I ask a lot of my guests to do this, given I know that, that so many um, you know, important people in the government do actually listen to the show and, and follow us on social media. Uh, what is your message to them about you and all your fellow young people currently basically sort of locked down in your bedrooms? I would say that if I can still go to work and stand next to people and serve food, which really isn't essential takeaways, then how come I'm not allowed to meet two friends outside of school, which will really do a lot better for my mental health? It is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it. It just, it's, it's, it's when you sort of get to grips with the, the, the madness of it all that it makes it really hard, isn't it? Um, Sophie, good for you for speaking out um, and, and just good luck with everything. I, and presumably you, you've not got exams this year. Do you know how well you're going to do or how badly you're going to do? I haven't got a clue because the teachers are no longer allowed to discuss any grades with us or how we're doing in, a, in our like internal tests. So I've got no clue what level I'm currently working at. That's madness. Yeah, it is. Oh my God! I want to have a word with the head teacher at your school. They've got to, <laughs> frankly, pull their fingers out. They really, that, that's absolutely shocking, Sophie. Oh look, wish you the best of luck, my love. Will you keep in touch? Will you let us know how you do do, and keep of in touch course, on the email. You. Thank you. Listen, and good luck to you, um, Benjamin Busworth. Look, you know, you support this lockdown. You, you're in favour of, of of keeping us, you know, everyone back at, you know, kids not at school. What what do you make of what Sophie had to say? I mean, I was quite shocked, actually, that she said that uh, proper Zoom lessons, you know, where you can see the teacher and they mm. explain stuff visually, that that's not happening. I can't see any reason why that couldn't happen, because every teacher, whether they're, you know, physically traveling to the classroom or in their own home, mm. has a laptop, just like you and I are doing well, this right I, now. I hate to break it to you, but this is the norm in most state schools. Everyone's well, I mean, thinking that's... all these kids are getting these great lessons, even if they do get live lessons. They're happening for like a couple of hours a day max. And I think that's an obvious disgrace. And but you know, but but, is, but, but it's, it's been but we've time. known this for months and we're still allowing it to happen. And I do also feel for kids because you know, as someone who's been working from home, like lots of people, sitting at your laptop on your own at home and working for nine hours. I mean, it takes a few years to adjust to that. That's a proper adult skill, and it's not much fun. Let's be honest. You know, it, it can be quite boring at times, even in the office, let alone at home. So the idea of asking sort of 14, 15, 17 year olds like Sophie to do that is a very big ask. And we know full well, let's be honest about teenagers, they're not going to do that as, as avidly as they'd be asked to because they're only human Good. and that's going to damage their education. Well